the heart and soul behind every business. Stories. Welcome to Business Story of the Week, hosted by me, Joshua Lori. From setbacks to comebacks, from tragedies to triumphs, we inspire entrepreneurs through conversations that matter. Witness the magic that turns dreams into reality. Whether it's your career, business, or life, your success is always one story away. This is Business Story of the Week. And welcome back, folks. Welcome back to Business Story of the Week. I am your host, Joshua. And, you know, it like every day we bring you questions in business, you know, relationships, you know, business relationships and your life as well. And today our question is, what does it take to turn your small business into a thriving enterprise? Well, our guest today is the man to talk about that. Andrew Fraser. MBA, CFA, is the founder of Small Business Pro University, where he helps small business owners sell more, make more, and get financing faster. He has authored two books, Running Your Small Business Like a Pro, and The Masterpreneur Playbook. I love that, by the way, Masterpreneur. Over the past 15 years, Andrew has worked one-on-one with over 1,000 business owners and taught tens of thousands of businesses. His diverse backgrounds, including serving as a Navy Supply Corps officer, corporate executive, COO, and adjunct professor, Andrew holds a degree from MIT in mechanical engineering and an MBA from NYU. And today he's going to share all that insight with us, all his experiences, Andrew, thank you for coming on the show. How's it doing, brother? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Joshua. It's fantastic, Andrew. Uh, you know, it's I, I love having uh, guests like you on the show because you've got quite the diverse background, of course, from serving in the Navy to becoming a serial entrepreneur. You know, textbook serial entrepreneur. First off, what inspired you to into the world? of small business coaching and consulting, especially coming from the background that you have? Well, I think, you know, in life is a journey Mm -hmm. and it came full circle for me. Actually, my first business was in fourth grade with my brother. Um, We had a paper out for five years. We grew it into a snow shoveling business and, you know, hired our friends. Mm -hmm. Um, I even had a business in college. So I think that um, just the journey, you know, worked in business, learned a lot there, but um, my small business roots just called me back and, and wow. I really love what I do. Small business roots called you back. What do we put that? So it's always been in the family. It's always been in your heart. It's always been in your life, basically. Um, what? So, of course, you got into the Navy, drew you away from small business, and it just called you back right in. Just the pull was too strong. Talk to us a little bit about your Navy experience. I'm always interested, in, you know, any anyone is anybody who's in the service, and how do you feel that helped? Any values and skills that you take from that being in the service to what you do today? I mean, at the end of the day, the military is a great, experience a great training ground especially as an entrepreneur right. um you know as a business owner you have to be good at so many things mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of discipline mm-hmm. and also you learn great leadership skills in the military and your business can only go as far as you're prepared to lead it so wow. um you know if you don't continually develop your leadership skills you're not going to get very far in business. Mm, okay. And that, of course, is a lot of skills that you picked up in the military and the Navy. Leadership skills is important regardless of what role you're at. You know, military, core, business owner, family guy, family man, you know, very important skills to have. Um, but now you are the founder of Small Business Pro, you know, SB Pro U. Dot com is the website. What motivated you to start this university? You call it the Small Business Pro University, and how does it aim to help business owners achieve their goals? Well, I mean, I focus on smaller small business owners, okay. five million in revenue and below, um, okay. all the way to zero in startups, wow. and 
you know, what I find is there's so many things that they need to know. And many times they're not prepared for what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, over my first five years coaching, consulting, and training, you know, I just started to see all these patterns of what the things I was helping people with, the things that they needed to know, the things that were hurting them. Mm -hmm. And that led me to write my first book, um, Running Your Small Business Like a Pro, which Mm -hmm. took me five years to write. Um, But I'm very happy with how it came out and it's helped Uh a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, But, um, you know, that led to, um, you know, just my, you know, enjoyed helping people learn and develop and being able to move their business forward. Um, Mm -hmm. So that led to um, writing another book and then, um, Mm -hmm. you know, building a knowledge base, um, you know, really building the university online with the great knowledge base. You know, I have a Mm -hmm. lot of experience and then I have a lot of um, other people, colleagues and other people who have great experience. So we've been able Mm -hmm. to like pull together a trove of valuable resources and knowledge for entrepreneurs and business owners. A treasure trove of a knowledge base for every business owner out there, you know, entrepreneurs, your books, of course, you know, running your small business, like a pro your masterpreneur playbook. What are some of, what is it exactly that people can expect or audience and listeners can expect from small business pro university? What are some of the critical insights or strategies that you share that can help small business owners thrive? Well, everything I do, is based on the Masterpreneur Playbook Framework. Wow, okay, and I love that. Really what that's about is it's the five steps growth plan to go from startup mm-hmm. to scale in your business. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. basically it outlines the five stages every business has to take to right. get their right. business to become a scalable business. Mm-hmm. But it's not just a path but you also have to have an evolution. So I call it the masterpreneur path. And then you have to have the masterpreneur evolution. So the business goes on the path, Mm -hmm. you have to evolve. And, you know, at each of the five steps, Mm -hmm. there's a certain leadership skill that you Mm -hmm. have to develop so that you can move forward. Um, There's a certain structure you have to put into place. And just like the stages, there's certain problem that you have to solve and there's a certain goal you have to you have to achieve so each of the five steps um going from working on the concept of your business working in your business working on your business working on the future of your business and then scaling Mm -hmm. your business um each of those steps Mm -hmm. um some people do them faster and easier than others right but less than 5% of business owners ever work on their business successfully. So wow. most businesses don't even, you know, might make it halfway, don't even make it halfway through the path. Wow. That's um, interesting. And you know, my goal, my mission is to help more people be able to go from working on the, in their business to on their business so right. they can get to scaling. Precisely. And that's always the, it's always a concern, right? And there's always a dream, so to speak. Um, I, I, I am always reminded of uh, a guest of mine said the same thing: working in your business, on your business, and there's also above your business, where, you, like you said, where you're starting to scale it now. Really, because you're now taking that kind of bird's view perspective. And I, I love that you put this in a framework. You put it in a path. But I'm also interested, I'm quite blown away, like less than 5% actually make it happen. That's very interesting. That's that's such a, what a number, you know? And uh, again, this is what you do with the university that you put up and you helping small business owners thrive. I feel like we have a a lot of time here to sort of unravel some of those paths, you know? Um, But your playbook, your masterpreneur playbook, and the, the, the lessons that you teach your small business owners today, what do you think is the most, how you say this, the most 
common struggle, the most common obstacle most entrepreneurs face right now? And what would be the most common one that you always coach small businesses to overcome? Well, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the number one challenge small businesses have is mm -hmm. generating revenue. Um, of course. And really, that's about sales and marketing. And that's because many people don't realize that that's their most important job as a business owner. That's what they're supposed to be doing. I tell people you need to, you need to be selling and marketing at least two hours a day. Every right. day. Um, right. So, you know, a lot of people don't even see that as part of what they're supposed to do. Um, so one, just educating them on that, but also a lot of people are out there just doing it. They're out there winging it. They don't know what they're doing, but they're mm -hmm. doing something. something. And <laughs> given, given how important that is, uh -huh. you should probably try and be good at it. So right, you know, I encourage people to gain as much knowledge about mm -hmm. sales and marketing because mm -hmm. that's the biggest driver of success in their business. Of course. Of course. And, th th and that means <laughs> I'm, I'm always reminded again of like always focus on the highest revenue task. What can bring in money right now? Because, you know, as a business owner, we're probably imagining like, you know, zero inbox, you know, I'm a zero email inbox and making sure I don't have any unread emails for today. That's not going to move the needle for you as much as you want to probably arrange your inbox and your emails. That's not really going to move. That's not going really to bring in the revenue for you. I think it's important to be, um, a salesperson just as much as you are as a business owner. I love how you highlight that it is the most important one, sales and marketing. How do you particularly tackle this in Small Business Pro University? And what is it that you, um, you teach people to be salespeople? And do you have a, a marketing framework that you teach as well? Um, yes. Yeah, so we have over 100 mini courses. Wow. In Small Business Pro University that mm -hmm. run the gamut of, you, um, you know, all different topics from finance to operations, from management mm -hmm. to marketing to sales. Um, but, you know, I try and communicate in such a way that a fifth grader can understand what I'm talking yes. about. Yes, yes, yes. And okay. I try and have examples that mm -hmm. really resonate, um, you know, especially talking about marketing. Because even a lot of marketing people don't really know what marketing is. They right. know what some marketing tools are. Maybe. But that's different than what marketing really is. Right. Um, sure. So, you know, try and break it down. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the key things is, you know, understanding the underpinnings of marketing. Right. So I, I talk to people about... Um, three reasons to market like a drug dealer, because mm -hmm. um, that outlines what marketing is. There's three wow. things. Not that okay, I want to okay. be a drug dealer, That not that I've ever yeah, been okay, a drug dealer, not that I want you to be a drug dealer, uh -huh, but you uh -huh. can learn some things in a way based on the story then that it's hard, harder to get other ways. Uh -huh. Why so, are they so effective, right? Why are drug dealers so good at their jobs? I, I, now that you mentioned it, I want you to unravel that, Andrew. Unravel that for our audience and listeners today. What makes a drug dealer so successful? And why should you be selling and marketing like a drug dealer? What does that involve? Well, number one, they don't sell to everybody. You know, you, you ever have a drug dealer That's try true. to make you buy drugs? <laughs> Of course, of course. Uh, they, they offer them, uh, you know. Maybe. And, but... and, and and they just offer them to the right people. To the right people. They, they, they say, you don't have to sell drugs. Drugs sell themselves. There you go. So there you go. if you have a good product and the right mm -hmm. product, mm -hmm. if you are talking to the right people with the right mm -hmm. message, you shouldn't have to sell it. There you go. Too, wow. Too Very many cool. people are out there trying to sell their stuff to the wrong wrong people, or cool. their stuff may not be sellable. Um, oh, of course, you know, or not sellable on the scale that they needed to be sellable. So, interesting. That's number one. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, you you have to have a niche. 
Interesting. Um, you know, number two is they don't overspend on marketing. You know, mm-hmm. they don't take out billboards or they don't spend a whole bunch of money. But it's really easy to waste a whole bunch of money on sales and marketing that isn't effective. Right, right. right. So, you know, as a business owner, you got you got to build your knowledge and know, understand it. You can't just delegate that. Um, of course. Because you'll waste a lot of money. And number three, they make friends. You know, they build relationships. <laughs> Business is about relationships. And yeah. like, if, if you do those three things, you're going to be better at marketing than most people. Fantastic. Fantastic. First off, know your market. You got to know your buyers. You know your market. If you know your market, <laughs> you're going to come to you because your product is good enough. But I think it's also the product, right? You got to know. It got to cut good, right? It has to cut good. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what that means either, but you know, it, it, has, it has to, it has to sell. If it's good enough, people are going to come, but you know, they make good friends as well. So why shouldn't you? We all should be, you know, good at relationship good at communication as well. And I, I love that. I love that you put that together. These are just one of the many, many, many guiding principles that you have over at Small Business Pro University. And I understand that part of the principle that you emphasize in SB Pro University is proactivity, creativity, and accountability when it comes to business. Can you explain to us how these principles play a role in helping a business owner grow and succeed? Well, in anything in life, you got to go to your strengths. Yes. Sir. And, you know, small businesses have different strengths than larger businesses. Mm-hmm. You know, larger businesses have money. They're better known. Um, you know, they have scale. So yeah. you can't compete with them head to head. But you could be more creative than them. You could be more flexible than them. Okay, okay. You could be more proactive than them. Okay. And get to the market and serve the market in different ways. Um, but you have to use your use your strengths and your advantages. So okay, okay. Um, that that's really the key to success as a small business owner. And it just doesn't. I feel like it just doesn't apply in businesses. Again, like you said, it applies in life as well. Being proactive, it's it's really like going the extra mile, right? Like it's almost like um, Kobe mindset, right? Being there at the gym earlier than everyone else, putting in the time, putting in the hours, you know, being more proactive than the other business owner, putting in a little bit more extra creativity, and of course, accountability. I, I want to focus a little bit when it comes to accountability as a business owner and as an entrepreneur and startups. How often do you see accountability or the lack thereof? Or you know, how is it applied when it comes to uh, entrepreneurship and how crucial it truly is when it comes to being successful? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, as a business owner, you're accountable for everything. Everything. And Mm -hmm. that's one of the things I learned in the Navy, because as a supply corps officer, I ran all the business functions for a ship. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I paid everybody. And you couldn't be off by a penny because otherwise you're going to Fort Leavenworth. So um, so I I learned a little bit about accountability there. and, and and just discipline. So as a business owner, those those are are key things. Um, you know, I think that everybody has a different personality type, and you know the personality type drives how you run your business. Um, but you know, there's certain key things that you either have to do or make sure are done within your business um, to make sure that you know you're accountable or there's appropriate accountability um, for the most important things. Yes. Um, Yes. Especially when it comes to what? Number one, uh, taking care of your people, right? That's the most important thing. If you can't take care of them, you know, you you just gotta be, you know, payouts gotta be on time. Accounting has to be straight on point. You know, it's one thing to run a business, but knowing your roles and where you, the must-haves, the must-do, 
right? Of course, we talk about sales. We talk about uh, marketing, which is your top role. All the other roles are just as important, perhaps, that come after that, including responsibility and your accountability as your, you know, what many other parts of your business that needs attention. Um, Andrew, it's, it's, it's quite interesting that you put together the university with the experience that you have today. Uh, I want to like pick your brain a little bit more when it comes to entrepreneurship and creating a career or building a career. What would be your biggest advice right now? If you were to pick one out of all the things that you've learned, what would you do differently before you started your first small business or before you, and one thing that most small business owners, most mistake that small business owners make, what would be that one advice that you truly, I think would just change your trajectory and, you know, save them a lot of headache basically. <laughs> okay. Well, that that's really hard to pick one. Yeah. It's, it's really um, hard. I know. It's, it's, but, I mean, I, we could, we could do a hundred because you know, there's a hundred of the, just that's that would be, that's an easier question for you. Right. But well, I'm making it extra hard for that. Okay. Well, let, let me, if I could do three. That okay. Would be okay. Great. Let's do three. Okay. That's all right. Let's so, do that. Number one, um, when you're going to transition to business, you need a new network. You need an entrepreneurial network because a lot of your network is in your network because of who you worked for, or who you, you know, your title or whatever, or what you could do for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you want to start building your entrepreneurial network before you leave. Entrepreneurial um, network. I love that. You know, you need to save your money because the number one investor is you in your business. So you need to save your money. Um, you need to set up your credit um, mm -hmm. and access to it before you leave. Mm -hmm. Because once you're out there on your own, you know, it's, it's hard. You know, they don't, banks and other organizations don't understand entrepreneurship so they don't it's much harder to get financing and other stuff so mm -hmm. you know you want to get all that stuff together and um you want to have some momentum you don't want to go out there with zero so mm -hmm. um you want to have a client or some clients so you may want to start part-time just so mm -hmm. you can build reputation uh because it can take a while before you get clients so if oh, you start okay. before you leave Mm -hmm. then you're way further down the road, you know, making money while you're doing it as opposed to making zero money for longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So. Okay. So, okay. First off, I love, I love how you went straight into it because I don't think that, I think that's that part. The first of the three is kind of overlooked and I don't, I don't hear that often because most often people get into this new business or their new this new venture and they're thinking, oh, I just I could just hit up all my friends. You know, I, I whatever network I have right now is the same network I'm going to tap into. I, it's very important to separate that. It's very important, I think, to 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 put a distinction that, nope, these people are quite different and they're probably not going to be the type of network you'd want to tap into. And that's very, very important to acknowledge. You also, of course, talk about a little bit about investment, saving your own money, because you are the first investor in this. But Andrew, what is the third one? You mentioned three. Did I miss the third one there? Okay. Yeah. The, so the third one, um, getting some momentum before you go. So momentum. you, you want to get a customer or some okay. customers. You may want to okay. work. You may want to do it part time. Right, right. Right. So you have some customers, you have some momentum because otherwise mm -hmm. you're going out there with zero revenue mm -hmm. and it may take a while to get some revenue. Um, right. but if you can start with some, you know, you're, you're much further down the road and then your money's going to go a lot farther. All right. Fantastic. Momentum is so important because again, it takes you farther 
Ah, interesting. I love that. Before you transition, it's important that you build momentum. So that means learning a little bit more, maybe start taking on a few smaller clients before you fully transition in because starting from zero, like everything, like drop everything at the drop of a hat, letting everything go to drop of a hat, and then just starting then and there, only, you know, only building your momentum from there is so much more difficult. It's going to take you, it's going to take you 10 times more work, I think, to start from zero than when you, at least when you're starting from just a two or a three, because you've already started building that momentum. You've already made some of the mistakes that you needed to make, right? From the get-go, this small scale before you truly, truly go out there. I love that three, by the way. And I love that I kind of challenge you to pick one, but I think you really gave a very, three very insightful um, uh, advices for our audience and listeners today. Andrew, you know, I, I want to give you this opportunity right now. Where can we connect with you? Where are you most active in? Where can we learn more about Small Business Pro University? Definitely. I'm most active on LinkedIn. So definitely mm -hmm. check me out. Andrew Frazier, CFA. Um, mm -hmm. We do a plan of the week. We do newsletters. And then I do a live stream every mm -hmm. Tuesday night. Um, mm -hmm through LinkedIn, Facebook, and, and YouTube. Um, right. And, you know, that's always great. Um, check out my university website, um, www.sbprou.com. And, um, and, and um, feel free to email me, connect with me on LinkedIn or, or whatever you prefer. All right. Fantastic. Andrew, thank you so much for your time, but you know, it's been great. It's the insights are great. I love, especially love. I'm a huge fan of that three insight you just gave us right now, by the way. I don't hear that often, to be honest. It's something that I think is overlooked for a lot of entrepreneurs. But Andrew, before we put this on a close, one last bit of wisdom, one last bit of advice. Take us home. Okay. At the end of the day, the more that you know, the faster and more successfully your business is going to grow. I love that. The more that you know, the more that you learn, the faster that you'll grow. I love it. And that is your uh, message for the world today, for our audience and listeners today. I hope you took as much value as I did. And, you know, you know, it's always been, a, it's always fun to have, you know, guests like Andrew, like yourself, Andrew, who's had such, you know, great, massive success and experience in this field, especially what we talk about here on the show. Andrew, thank you so much for coming on. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Joshua, for having me. Fantastic. And to all our audience and listeners out there, see you on the next one. All right. So here's the thing. We try to get a little bit better every day, but we can't do it without you. So if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe below. And if you have any comments, just leave them in the space under.